Hello everyone, how are you all? Welcome to the Alan Digital. I hope everybody is fine. Let's have a look at today's class and we are going to discuss motion in plane. So what is a motion in plane basically? You have already come across motion in straight line and motion in three dimension and two dimension and so on. What are these actually? So motion in a plane basically involves that we will be requiring two dimensions motions. Okay. So basically it means there will be, let's say if you take horizontal direction as one direction, then other direction will be the vertical direction like that. So they are at some 90 degree to each other, right? You must have seen the X, Y plane, Y, Z plane, X, Z plane. If the motion is happening in those planes, then you are going to say that the motion will be two dimension. But there is also one more important thing regarding this, that this is the minimum dimensions required to explain that motion. Okay. It should not be like, like motion in a straight line. If you take as an example, it can be denoted in a two dimension as well as in three dimension as well as right. But here we are actually focusing on minimum dimensions required for a particular motion. And for that, we are going to see here some examples of motion in plane. And one of them is actually the projectile motion. Let's see this particular topic. Projectile. What is projectile? First of all, basically it's a path followed by a particle when you throw it at some oblique angle, right? And the most important thing, the force has to be constant force. Okay. And then the trajectory or the path of the particle will be called as projectile. Now, when a particle is having the motion on that path or trajectory, we call that motion as projectile motion, right? Let's see some more interesting things regarding this projectile motion. What do you see over here? It is one of the famous sports, right? And what's the name for it? Golf. What this man is going to do is that he's going to shot the ball at some particular angle. Let's have a look at this. See, he's getting ready himself and now he's going to take that shot at some angle, just like you do it in the games of uh, cricket, football, like that. See, there is some angle of inclination over there, right? Now this ball is going to go in that particular direction, but Will it move in that straight line? No. What do you see? It is actually tracing a particular curve over here, right? And then it falls at the target. So what type of path it is? So first of all, the thing that we should know here is that, is there any force acting on this body, which is causing this path that is going to taken care by the dynamics part, right? That we are interested in finding out why it is following that particular path. But here we are not going to discuss that thing. But we do know one thing, there is already you have studied acceleration due to gravity, right? So gravity is acting on the particle, which is making the ball trajectory to take a curve, okay? But how the things are happening over here, we are going to discuss now that part, okay? Let's see. So this is the trajectory of that ball, okay? And then let me take one direction as X, and then vertical direction as let's say y okay then initially the angle of projection is theta what is this angle the projection angle theta we have horizontal speed u cos theta we have now vertical speed as u sine theta over here okay the speed is u all right and then what is happening this is going in that direction and at all the times there is an acceleration components acting on it you have already learned resolution of vectors, right? So there is an acceleration vector already present there when something is having a free fall and that is the motion in the gravity case. And we do know that in vertical direction, it is acceleration is having G in the downward direction. But what about in horizontal direction? Is there any acceleration in the horizontal direction? No, no acceleration along the horizontal direction. We always have acceleration perpendicular to the horizontal surface over here. All right. So this type of trajectory is followed in these scenarios, right? So let's have some calculation part of it that how is this trajectory? What are the velocities? What are the displacements at different moments of time during its journey via having projectile motion? All right. Let's have a look at some more examples of this projectile motion. You see this, there's a football player on the ground and he's going to kick the ball. Let's see how is the trajectory of that ball? Look at the trajectory or look at the path followed by the ball, right? It is similar to what was done with that golf course, right? So over here, 
this trajectory is similar to that trajectory and this type of motion is again a projectile motion. Let's have a look at another example. Over here if you see, we have this case that a javelin throw, I hope you have already uh, seen this in Olympics also, right? See this throw was done and shot at this man. How is the trajectory of this path? Again, it's a projectile motion, okay? Similarly, there's another example, have a look at this. This is the cannon and it's going to shot the bomb and look at this, the path of the bomb. Have a look at this. Again, this trajectory is also a projectile motion over here, okay? So what is a projectile motion then? Very simple, as now we have discussed, we need two dimensions to describe it. One is like horizontal and another one is perpendicular to it is what? Vertical, right? So it's actually going to take help of combination of two mutually independent directions. One is horizontal, one is vertical. Now they are mutually independent. That means all the kinematic parameters like velocity, acceleration, displacement, they will also be mutually independent. But what will connect them? Time is going to connect them. Let's see this quickly. This is how the trajectory of the projectile looks like, okay, or the path of the projectile looks like. You have the speed u, thrown, velocity, and theta is the angle. This angle is called angle of projection. Horizontal speed is u cos theta, and vertical speed will be u sin theta, taking help of resolution of vectors, right? Now, this motion can be described as a combination of x direction motion and y direction motion. Let's see. Along the horizontal motion, along the x direction, what is my acceleration? Zero. What is my velocity? U cos theta. And if acceleration along x is zero, then my velocity along x will be constant, right? Similarly, it can be taken as a combination with the y direction, that is vertical motion. Look at in y direction, the acceleration is g downward. And what is the initial velocity in the y direction? U sin theta. That means my y direction speed is going to decrease with time, right? So we can solve the two directions separately, but the time will be same while we are solving it, okay? Let's have a look at it. So this projectile can be considered as the combination of horizontal and vertical motion. Therefore, in the horizontal direction, your speed is this u cos theta, and that will be constant, will not going to change. Therefore, my final velocity in x direction is ux, okay? And what about if speed is constant in the x direction? That means my displacement in the x direction can be simply written as ux into time, right? And similarly, in the y direction, if you see, I have initial some speed, acceleration is in the downward direction, then I can apply equation of motions for constant acceleration case, right? So this is the three equation of motion that I'm going to play with to find out what could be velocities, what could be displacements or position of a particle during the journey, right? So we just have to remember these things in order to progress further, okay? So this is the parabolic path or projectile motion trajectory or path. And you look at this at a particular moment of time. This is the particle position, horizontal u cos theta, vertical u sin theta minus gt. That's my velocity vector. And what is the magnitude of velocity vector? The x component square plus y component square whole over root u cos theta ka square plus u sin theta minus gt ka whole square and take the root overall. So what is this angle? This is the angle now, alpha. It is actually the angle of velocity vector with the horizontal level, okay? So here, what is tan of alpha then? Absolutely, you have to use trigonometry. So let's see this time of flight over here. Flight, I hope you know the meaning of flight. So time of flight, what does it implies? It implies that you have to find out what is the total time taken during that journey of flight, like that. So this same thing over here, time of flight, okay? What will happen during the time of flight? It will start from one position, it will go to the other position. What is the displacement in the y direction? Zero. So that's what it is talking about. The displacement along the vertical direction is zero for that complete flight, okay? Now, if that is zero, hence along vertical direction, net displacement is zero. And what was the displacement along y direction formula? It was Sy, right? Sy was u sin theta into t minus half gt square. 
so that is actually zero if you put it as zero can you get the value of t from that equation right and what will come up it will come 2u sin theta by g so let's have a look at it very simple ex explanation sy is u sin theta into t minus half g t square you equate it to zero what is your time coming 2u sin theta by g this is my time of flight that means it will take this much amount of time to go from one position to another position at the same horizontal level and now it is going to be horizontal range what is horizontal range it is a maximum displacement in the horizontal direction right so the journey started from one point and ended up another point you have to find what is the maximum displacement along the horizontal direction so i have to play with horizontal coordinates right that is x coordinates but if i do know that along the horizontal direction my speed is constant correct u cos theta and i do know what is the time of flight can i get the range very simple speed into that time of flight so let's have a look at this if i have to calculate the range how will i write down the speed along the horizontal direction that is u cos theta multiplied by the time of flight time of flight is 2u sin theta by g okay so overall you play with this formula and i think you can get it easily taking help of trigonometry identities how this formula will be modified this will be u square sin 2 theta by g so that's the range of the particle it is a maximum displacement in the horizontal direction okay so what's the formula u square sine 2 theta by g over here i hope it's clear to everybody what is the formula for the range of particle and also the time of flight they all are coming from the simple various uh, kinematic parameters that one you have to take along x and one you have to take along the y direction all right let's now calculate another parameter maximum height as well it is a maximum vertical displacement you might have seen when the golf game was played that man made a shot it went to a particular height and that was the maximum height so how to calculate that maximum height then well height is related to vertical direction motion right i hope you understand that point height is related to the vertical direction motion so i should be taking help of y coordinates then right so if i do know what is the total time of flight or if i do know what is happening at the topmost point of its path then i can eventually calculate that what is the height or what is the displacement along the y direction right so let's see this quickly at the highest point of its trajectory what is happening particle moves only horizontal is that correct think about it if a particle goes to the topmost point it is not going further higher what does it mean it means in that direction velocity is zero so where is the velocity then only along horizontal direction correct so that's the point at the highest point of its trajectory particle moves horizontally therefore the vertical direction velocity is going to become zero over there right so therefore v y will be zero so it's eventually telling us that at highest point my v y is zero it at highest point if v y is zero so i do know the formula of v y that was u sin theta minus gt so what is the time taken to reach to that highest point well we are getting that time will be u sin theta by g so in that time the particle is going to reach at the topmost point so what will be the displacement along the y direction very simple you have to use the equation of sy you do know the initial velocity you do know the time of reaching to that point okay so let's have a look at this and it's going to come up as u square sine square theta by 2g see displacement along y is going to be that h max okay and when you write down your sy formula you have to put there as u sine theta okay what's the time u sine theta by g and then minus half a t square right g into t square 
So when you put there the values of t over here, and in the end you will get this term u square sine square theta by g minus u square sine square theta by 2g. So overall what is it? u square sine square theta by 2g. So that's the formula for maximum height. So three important parameters here, range, time of flight and maximum height. All these should be clear to everyone, okay? Let's see quickly this example. This is a projectile motion happening. And here the ball is thrown at an angle of 37 degree, right? What is the speed? 50 meter per second. So they are asking about the three important parameters, time of flight, maximum height, and range of particle. What is the formula of time of flight? 2u sine theta by g. What is the formula for maximum height? u square sine square theta by 2g. And what is the formula of range of particle? u square sine 2 theta by g. Just use these formulas, you will get your answer directly here, right? Have a look at the A part answer, okay? Time of flight, 2u sine theta by g, 2 times u. What is your u? It is 50, theta 37, divided by g, assuming g to be a 10 value or you can take it more accurately 9.8, right? For simply, uh, simpler calculation wise, I will take it as 10. So how much do you get? You get it as 10 into sine 37. Sine 37 is 3 by 5. So this value will be 6. Okay. So 6 seconds is the time of flight over here. So let's see this B part, which is actually the maximum height. So you have to use this formula. U square sine square theta by 2g. What is your u? u is actually 50. So 50 square into sine of 37 square divided by 2 into 10. How much value is coming? 50 square is 2500. Sine 37 is uh, 3 by 5. So 9 by 25, right? Keep writing. 2500 into 9 by 25 divided by 20. So how much do you get? One year. This is 100. Okay. So this will be 90 by 2, which is 45 meter. So that is actually the maximum height rise, right? 45 meter from the ground. What about the range? Again, same formula. You have to use u square sine 2 theta by g over here. So have a look at it. C part. Range. u square sine 2 theta by g. Okay. u square will be 2500. Divide by 10 will be 250, right? So 250 and what is sine 2 theta? It is 2 sine theta cos theta. So I will multiply it by 2. Sine 37 is 3 by 5. And cos 37 is 4 by 5. So how much we are getting? 500, 100, right? 100 and that is 20, 24, 20, 12, 240 meter. All right. So that is the range of the particle. So this is how you have to proceed in these particular cases. I hope it's clear to everybody.